Well, welcome to the Great British Woodshop. It doesn't matter how big your workshop is, you're always looking for places to store things. And I use this top shelf in the workshop on a daily basis. And what I've been using to get up there so far is this. And that hardly seems right for a woodworker. So in today's show, we're going to build a folding step stool. And when I was up at Speak Hall last summer near Liverpool, I found a really interesting piece of furniture that they use to get up to high spaces. Well, the gardens here at Speak are really magnificent in the summertime, but they're a fairly recent addition. And what I really brought you here to see is what's inside this, a magnificent 500-year-old Tudor timber frame building. This is the Great Hall, and it's the oldest part of Speak, completed in 1530 by Edward Norris. It was the center of activity. Meals were had here, business was conducted, servants even slept on the floor. Over in the corner is a life-size portrait of the child of Hale, and he stood nine foot three inches tall. When King James found out about the giant, he sent for him to fight one of his knights. The child of Hale was victorious, he broke one of the knight's thumbs, and King James pensioned the knight off at 20 pound a year. The library was built 10 years after the Great Hall, but it has some modern additions. This wallpaper, for instance, was designed by William Morris, the leader of the arts and crafts movement. Now, how would they have got to the top shelf to get these books? I suppose one way to do it would have been to climb up on top of this end table, but they had a much more elegant solution than that. Have a look at this. I've never seen anything like it. The top section of this table folds down to reveal two steps. Further hidden inside is another extension which in total gives you a six-step stepladder. And that's how they got to the top shelf. Well, here's the folding step stool. It's built from solid oak. It stands 600 mil high, which is a good height to climb up to the high spaces and a good height to sit down and have a rest on. Constructed with mortise and tenon joints. And that makes this piece so strong that I'll probably use the pair of these in the workshop as saw horses. And I'm gonna get all the pieces I need out of this one piece of oak. Now let me show you what I do to assess a board before I cut it up. I usually head down to the painted ends and this paint is put on by the sawmill when they mill up the boards and it's there to help the timber from drying out too quickly because this is where timber will split from its end grain and I had a look at this board and unfortunately my fears are realized and I have a split from here to here and I checked it and the split goes right through to the other side. So there's no good in me trying to get my top out of this end. But I can get the smaller pieces like the rails and the stretches out of here and that will give me plenty of material. Up here in the center it's fairly clear and here in this section I've got a knot and some swirly grain and you'll notice there's some black marks on here and this is put on by the timber yard not by me. When they priced up this board they've deemed this section here unusable and so they've only charged based on 1.8 meters of usable material. Down this end here, it's completely clear, and so I'll be able to get my top out of this section, and down here I'll get the step, and they're the two bits that I'm gonna cut next. Well, next I'm gonna trim off this painted end and have a look and see if there's any more splits on there that I need to worry about. And then I'll rough cut for the remaining pieces for the stool. Here are our four legs, rough cut, and the next job is to create a smooth, flat face on each of the boards. And to do that, I'm going to use the jointer. Now, the first thing I'm looking for is a high point, and I've got one in this board on the center because it's bowed. So what I'll do is I'll flip it over, and I'll have a high point then at each end. The other thing I look at is the direction of the grain. Now, it's hard to spot on some boards. On this one, it's a little more obvious. And you can see here, the grain is running in this direction. And a good analogy would be like scales on a fish. As you rub your hand one way, it's smooth, and that's with the grain. As you run it the other way, it's rough, and that's against the grain. And you always want to plane boards in the direction of the grain. Now I'll take that jointed edge and put it up against the fence. And as long as I keep that firmly against the fence as I push it through the jointer, I'll end up with an edge that's at 90 degrees to that face. Next, it goes through the thickness planer and I'll reduce the thickness down to 19 mil. Then it's over to the table saw to cut it to the right width. And then finally, I'll clean up the sawn edge on the jointer. The sides are constructed in an A-frame. 
so it's narrower at the top and wider at the bottom and that'll give the stool a lot more stability. Now where these rails meet the legs, the shoulders are cut at a five degree angle. And I'm gonna cut these to length next at the compound miter saw. All the rails have been cut to length with five degree angles on both ends and now I need to add some tenons. And here's a template that I set up before and you can see how on the ends of the rail the tenons angle upwards at that five degree angle and they join into the frame like that. Now let me show you how I'm going to set up the jig to cut those angled tenons. Now I can actually cut any tenon angle I like by adjusting this fence and it'll vary from anything from up to 45 degrees to down to minus 10. So normally when I cut tenons I have it set to zero. But all I need to do is angle this now to five degrees and I can lock the fence in that position with this key. Now when I slide the board up with my five degree angle on the top, you'll notice that it sits parallel to the top of the jig. Now I can set the jig up in the normal way. I've drawn my center line and I've come in and marked a point five mil from both ends. And that'll give me the length of the tenon. The tenon width is eight mil. Now if I look at the guide bush set up here, it says an 8mm tenon width, I need a 30mm bush, and that's what I've installed in the router. And I've also set the depth of cut to 30mm, because I want a nice long tenon to give us lots of strength in the joint. I finished cutting the tenons on all the rails. This is the short one for the top, and the longer one here for the middle. And while I was at it, I cut a couple of tenons on the ends of these pieces here. And that's to join the front of the step stool. There's nothing on the back of them because they'll be cut, rounded over with a hole drilled through them. Now the last piece to get some tenons is this stretcher across the back. In order to do that, I need to make a couple of adjustments on the jig. I'll reset the fence back to zero, and then I'll make an adjustment to the plates so I can center the tenon. I'll also adjust the depth of cut in the router to give me a 10 mil deep tenon. And the mortise needs to start two millimeters up from the reference point we just marked. And that's the distance between the edge of the tenon and the edge of the board. That's that distance there. So I'll put a mark there and draw a line across all four boards. The length of the tenon is 40 mil. So I'll measure up 40 mil from that previous line and then draw a line across all four boards and then I'll remove the material between those two lines to create the mortise. I use the same technique to mark out the mortises for the top and now I'll go and cut those out. Now to cut the mortises in these legs I've slid the stock in the side of the jig and because I'm going to be cutting a mortise right on the end here and I've only got this clamped with one clamp I've slid a block underneath here to support it. Now I've changed the bit in the router to an 8mm bit and I've also changed the depth so it's at 30 mil. Now I need to add this collar which will slip over the top of the bush that increases the diameter of the bush from 30 to 54 mil. And this bush will ride in the opening and it will not allow for any sideways movement. It'll only be able to travel backwards and forwards. Now to cut the next mortise I'll just reposition the stock using the setup bar I'll clamp it in place and I'll do the same with the other three legs and the two short legs that support the step. Now these stools are going to get dragged around the workshop quite a bit and it's probably going to chip the bottom of the legs. So a good way to try and reduce that is to chamfer the bottom of all four sides on all four legs. And I'll do that here at the sanding station. Well it's time for the A-frames to get glued up. And I'm just going to stick a little glue on the tenons. Now these joints are so tight that I'm not even going to worry about putting any in the mortise. There'll be enough glue on here to hold it in place. And that goes in. And these ones can slip on. Well that's one frame glued up. During the break, I'll clamp up the other one, and when we come back, I'll start working on the top. Well, 
Well, welcome back to the Great British Woodshop. Today we're building a step stool made from solid oak. Handy in the kitchen and handy here in the workshop. And when I'm finished the second one, I'll double these as saw horses. Now before the break, we made up the A-frame, glued it up and left it to dry. And now I'm gonna make this top. Now this board is wide enough to give me the top. But as is usual with wide boards, they tend to cup. And that's the case with this one, and it's only gonna get worse. So what I'm gonna do is rip it down the middle, flip one side over, and that'll alternate these growth rings, and then I'll rejoin the boards together, and that'll make the top flat and stable. And I'm gonna rip it down on the table saw. Now it's just a few passes over the jointer, through the thickness planer, I'll rip it to width, and I'll be ready to join them. Well, you can see how these boards were joined. There's the growth rings going in this direction. And I flipped one board over. And now I've got growth rings traveling this way and traveling this way, and that'll make for a nice stable board. I've marked positions for three number 20 biscuits. I'll joint them, and then I'll glue it up. I'm using American white oak for this project. It's lighter in color than the European oaks, and I really preferred that for this project. But all oaks share the same durable qualities. They're tough as old boots. Now for years, the British Navy ruled the waves on ships built out of English oak, and it's still used in boat building today. And they use it for barrels, for storing various spirits, extensively used in flooring, The A-frames are ready to receive mortises for this stretcher, and the stretcher sits at a five degree angle that keeps it parallel with the rest of the stool. Now the stretcher's there to add some lateral support, it'll stop the whole stool from tipping side to side. So I've marked out the position here on the A-frame of where the stretcher will sit, and it's going to sit parallel with this rail. The length of the tenon is five mil in from both sides, so I'll just make a mark at that point. And I've set my bevel gauge up to five degrees. And I'll draw two indicator lines, which will give me a position to start and stop the cut. And I can achieve that five degree angle simply by setting my fence up against the side of the stool. And then as I run it down, it'll keep that cut parallel to this face. Well, the support for the step is made up from more of these mortise and tenon joints. And that sits like that. Now I'm going to cut this off and round it over a little bit later. And that'll be so we get a little bit softer edge here. And the next thing I need to do is to drill some holes. One for this dowel that serves as the front stretcher for the stool and also as a pivot point for the step. And I also need to drill some clearance holes for these screws, and they're going to go all the way through the rails. And those screws will be used to attach the step to the rail. I also want to drill some holes that only go part way through in the legs of the step. And that's for this front stretcher that will support and keep these legs apart. And I'm going to do all of that over at the drill press. The first holes that get drilled are in the step support rails. And those holes go all the way through, and I'll pass the dowel through those and into the A-frame. They'll get drilled out with a 20 mil Forstner bit. Those 20 mil holes in the step support rails will allow the step to pivot freely around this 19 mil dowel. But the dowel between the legs is structural, and I want that to fit into the legs snugly. So I'll drill those with a 19 mil Forstner bit. I've adjusted the stop on the drill press so that it'll only allow the bit to go down 10 mil, and now I can drill those stopped holes. To mark the position for the hole in the A-frame, where the dowel will go, that will pivot this step assembly, I've measured up 245 mil, which is the center of this rail, and I've measured in 25 mil, which is the center of the leg. And at that point there, I'm going to drill a hole 14 mil deep, still with the 19 mil Forstner bit installed in the drill press. The clearance holes in the step support rail are drilled with a 5 mil brad point bit. And I'll also countersink these holes so the screw heads can sit flush. Well now I'll trim these pieces to length at a 5 degree angle on the compound miter saw. And then I'll add that little rounded over detail on the bottom of the sanding station and then I'll glue it up. Now while those dry, I'll go make some dowels. 
Now I need to make two bits of dowel and I'm starting with some 19 mil square stock. I milled this up in the usual way and I've got a rounding over bit or an overload cutter as it's called installed in the router table. And I've set it up so that the bearing is exactly in line with the fence. And I've set the height of the cutter so that it just goes past the centre of the stock. And that'll give me a quadrant on this corner. And what I'm going to do is push it onto the bit, push it through to the other side and stop, leaving a little bit of material at both ends. Then I'll rotate the board around, push it back onto the cutter, push it through to the other end, and then I'll repeat that on all four sides. When I'm finished, I'll have a dowel in the centre, and then I'll just be able to trim off the square bits at the end. Now the top gets attached to these two stretches with some screws, but I need to bevel the front edge of both stretches at a five degree angle, and that's to match the angle that the leg meets the top. I've set the fence to five degrees, and a couple of passes over the jointer will give me that bevel. Well, I've dry assembled the stool and held it fairly securely while I positioned the two stretches. I wanted to line up the bevel exactly with the edge on the leg. And now I'm going to drill some pilot holes for some number 8 screws that I'll use to attach the stretcher to the leg. Now I don't want to see the heads of these screws once I've driven them in, so I'm going to cut a recess for the screw head and fill it in with an oak plug. And to do that I'm using a plug cutting set. Now this bit will enlarge the pilot hole, so I'll have a clearance hole and the screw will pass all the way through that without engaging the thread in the leg. And the top section of the cutter here will cut a recess for the plug. And I've set the depth on the drill press so that the recess will be about halfway down. Now here's the other half to that set. This is the plug cutter and they come in various different sizes and you can get them tapered or straight. The tapered plug cutter creates a plug that gets tighter and tighter as you knock it into the hole. And this one here is just a straight cutter and it cuts a circle and leaves a plug in the center. As the step pivots, the legs on the step need to stay clear of the legs on the stool. And to keep them centered, I made up a couple of oak washers and they act as spaces. And I started with some stock and milled it down to three mil thick. And I just took a compass and I'm gonna draw a circle, which will be the outside of the washer. And with the 20 mil Forstner bit reinstalled in the drill press, I'm going to drill out the centre hole, and that'll be the bit that goes over the dowel. And then I'm going to sand this into a circle over at the sanding station. I've installed a 5 mil Brad Point bit to drill some clearance holes in these stretches. This will be the holes that I'll pass the screws through that I'll use to fasten the top. And I'll also countersink the holes so the screw heads can sit flush. Now one last thing I want to do before I glue up the stool is to knurl the ends of these dowel rods. The reason I want to do that is because the dowel is the same size as the hole. And once the glue goes on there and you push it in, it'll either squeeze all the glue out and leave none in the hole, or if you've got some in the hole it won't let it come out and the dowel won't seat in the bottom. So to knurl it, I'm just going to use a pair of grips. And I'm going to use the jaws to make some indentations. And I'll just work my way around like that, and it'll create a little channel that the glue can flow out. Well, it's good that this project got glued up in stages because this would have been some sort of juggling act to get it all glued and clamped. And the last washer goes on there. And I'm also going to slip in this little spacer block at the back here, and that's just to keep the two support rails for the step parallel as that glue sets up. And I'm just holding the stretches in place while I put these screws in into those pilot holes that we drilled earlier. And I'm also watching the grain here as I put it in to make sure that the grain in the plug lines up with the grain on the board. And it'll help disguise it even more. Well, the top's had plenty of time to dry, and I'll just give it a sanding with some 120 grit paper, and then I'll cut it to its final dimensions. One pass over the jointer cleaned up that sawn edge. The step was made exactly the same way as I made the top, 
and I'm going to add a bit of detail to the top edge of both the step and the top. And that's created with an overload cutter. And I've set the surface of the cutter just below the top and that'll accentuate the end grain and it'll just give this top a bit of a raised look. Well, I've given the legs and the stretches and the rails a hand sanding just to remove any sharp edges and I'm going to trim these plugs and I'm going to use this saw. Now normally with saws the teeth are offset either side of the saw. With this one they sit flat with the body of the blade. So I can just lay the saw on here and I'll pretty much be able to trim these off flush with the surface of the stool. And I'll just finish it off with the random orbit sander. Now I've centered the top with a 10 mil overhang all the way around. I'm just going to hold the top in place with a clamp and mark positions where I'll drill the pilot holes. Now for the step it overhangs on the front by 10 mil but sits flush on the other three sides and I'll mark this in the same way. A little bit of tape on the drill bit to help me set the depth of the hole and the square to help me keep the drill at 90 degrees. The top gets attached with some inch and a quarter number 10 screws and the step gets attached with some two and a half inch number 10 screws. Well the finish I've decided to put on this project is a water-based satin varnish. And that's because I want the finish to be as durable as the oak that's underneath it. I gave the whole piece a thorough vacuuming and I'll give it a wipe over with a tack cloth as well because particularly with varnish finishes any dust that's left on the piece will spoil it. Now the thing I like about water-based varnishes is that they dry quickly. This will be touch dry in about 20 minutes and it's recoatable in a couple of hours. And of course the other beauty is that with a water-based finish the brushes get cleaned up with water. I'm not going to apply too heavy a coat to this and when this stuff comes out of the can it's milky but when it goes on it's going to be completely clear. So not too heavy a coat, just a, a light coat and with all finishes the idea is to keep the finish going in the direction of the grain. After I've finished putting the coat on this one I'll put a coat on the second stool and then I'll switch on the dust extraction here in the finishing shop and that'll stop any airborne dust particles settling on this and spoiling the varnish. Well now I can see where all the dust goes. Now, I've finally got a pair of wooden step stools that I can use here in the workshop. But these pieces are fine enough to use anywhere in the house. Thanks for watching the Great British Woodshop. I'm David Free. We'll see you next time.